It may not be as sexy, but training your lower body will do more for your health and fitness than your upper body will. Hey everybody, I thought I would chat with you guys and gals a little bit about this today. And you know, again, I, I don't want to discount the fact that for most of you guys out there, and this applies more to the guys, obviously a lot more women are, are willing to train legs than men, historically. Uh, but for guys, I mean, everybody wants to do biceps. I get it. Arms are sexy. Arms are what, what you want. You want to be able to flex those guns in the mirror. But when it comes to your health, when it comes to your fitness, leg muscle has more impact on your overall health, on your overall fitness, your overall body composition, right? Even your ability to lose weight, lose fat, all of these things. Um, and part of that is is because our legs are bigger than our upper body. Uh, and a lot of people are not aware of this because they see the upper body, they see the big giant rib cage, all that, uh, you know, uh, scapula. They see all that area and they assume that the upper body might be just as big or bigger. But the reality is your leg muscles, trained or untrained, are much bigger than all the muscles in your upper body. Uh, in, in other words, just your quadriceps on the front of your thighs, right? Your quadriceps alone are larger than any two muscles of the upper body combined. So I mean, you could literally take your pecs and your lats, combine them together, and they would be smaller than your quads, okay? Your glutes, the same thing. Like those two muscles alone are bigger than any two muscles of the upper body combined. And when you combine them together, your glutes and your quads, they are considerably larger. This is before we get into hamstrings, calves, any of that. They're way more muscle in those in, in the entire top half of your body. So when you start thinking in terms of all of the health benefits, uh, you know, what we're looking at, the legs bring a lot more to the table. Then we'll get into to actual movement in a minute too. But uh, so, so let's think about what we mean by, by health. The ability to dispose of glucose, the ability to have higher insulin sensitivity, the ability to lower uh, your cholesterol, the ability to lower your blood pressure, okay? Reducing chances of cancer. All of these things, muscle mass is protective against every one of these things. And the, the data supporting this is overwhelming. Uh, it's many countries, every major country has conducted studies on this. Most of the researchers around the world agree muscle mass is protective against cancer. Muscle mass is protective against diabetes. And it's not to say that people with a lot of muscle can't get these. It's that they are much, much, much more resistant to it. And part of that has to do with glucose disposal, right? We simply burn through more carbs and have higher insulin sensitivity and therefore better insulin control, better glucose control, better blood sugar control when we have a lot of muscle mass. Okay, the, and the more muscle, the better. Now, people say, well, how come this old bodybuilder over here had certain problems? Well, because they're using tons and tons of substances that could cause other harm, okay? Uh, and some of those substances can cause cancer. Some can cause diabetes. Not going into the specifics, it's not just what you guys are thinking of, uh, you know, with, with uh, sterons there. And I don't want to say the word anymore. Uh, not good for my uh, algorithms, but it's all the other stuff they take too. A lot of those things can predispose you to these to these issues. And so the muscle mass itself is productive, but they're causing all this other harm through, through abusing other things. So keep that in mind. If it was just the muscle gain without those things, they would be uh, extremely resistant to these things. So, so again, if you're building muscle purely by lifting weights, eating protein, sleeping well, right? It's, it's not a concern. It's always a net positive and every amount you gain is worth more. It's, it's worth more in terms of protective benefit. It scales. Uh, same thing with cardiovascular disease to a slightly lesser extent. Okay, to a slightly lesser extent, but it is absolutely there. Uh, the, the data does show that strength training actually has better impacts on your cardio than doing actual cardio does in terms of cardiovascular health, reducing heart attacks, but they are through different pathways, mind you. So, so it's, it's not to say they're mutually exclusive. People who lift weights and who do cardio actually do a little bit better. Okay. But uh, the, the data for that is quite strong. But the others, it, it is massive, particularly anything related to insulin sensitivity and glucose, and that would be cancers and diabetes. Massive, massive deal. So if we're looking at that from that protective benefit, 
your leg muscles have way more potential for size. They start bigger and they have the potential to end bigger. So you, you can literally build twice as much muscle in your lower body as you can your upper body. So if we're pursuing those benefits, it makes sense to put a lot of focus into your lower body. Okay, and that's just for, for those benefits. How about even weight loss and, and energy turnover, the ability to eat more food? Okay, well, yeah, obviously muscle mass uh, increases metabolism, but what about what we're using to walk and do cardio with? Ooh, your legs get used more actively. So therefore, when you're talking about walking around, because the leg muscles are the, directly doing the work, and if they're bigger, you actually get more energy turnover doing your cardio, walking, running, jogging, all that stuff, uh, particularly if it's, if it's mostly lower body dominant, like walking, running, cycling, any of that. Swimming and things, obviously you got a little more upper body rowing. But uh, when, when you look at it from that perspective, it's, it's actually a higher energy output for that muscle. So not just metabolic rate, but active uh, energy turnover. And then particularly calves. I mean, I would say to people, if you're trying to lose body fat or have a higher metabolic rate, calves are worth even more. Why? Because of that swing weight. So this is one of the things I've, I've said quite a few times. The data over the years shows that uh, certain tribes and stuff, the ones who win all the, the marathons and the endurance events, distance running at the world level, tend to come from certain countries. It's because it turned out they have less calf muscle. That's it. That's it, less calf muscle, because their ancestors in, in pretty recent times had to survive tons of famine and starvation, and therefore the people who had smaller calves lived, unfortunately, they lived. So therefore, they pass those genes on. So they have less actual calf muscle. They're able to run marathons longer because they need less calories, less energy, all of that just to run on a step-for-step step and mile-for-mile mile basis. So the opposite is true when you start building calf muscle. If you build calf muscles, you burn more energy doing cardio because of the, not just the active muscle involved, but the swing weight. So the actual swing of the legs, bigger calves, it's like wearing heavier shoes. You burn a significantly more calories when doing other activities and cardio, walking, running, jogging, cycling, all of that from the higher swing weight. Okay? So if you're trying to, to burn through body fat or just get to eat more food, those calves really pay off. Right? So long story short, train your legs. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative and I'll talk to you guys and gals next time.